Well, good morning, everybody. How are y'all doing this morning? It's good to see you. Would y'all go ahead and stand up? We're going to jump into worshiping our Lord this morning. Let's open up with some prayer. Lord God, we come to you this morning. Um, We bring you our hearts. We bring you our worries and our, our cares and our burdens, God. We come into your house this morning because we know this is a safe place to carry those things to you, God. And we just pray that we feel your presence this morning. We just love you, Lord, and we worship you, and we give you all the glory. Amen. One, two, three, four. Tabernacle 
so good, y'all. Oh, he's so good. praise you this morning, Jesus. We thank you for your salvation. We thank you for our salvation. We thank you for your sacrifice, God. We just love you, and we worship you, and we come to you this morning. We seek you. We have burdens on our hearts. We have anxieties in our minds, God, and we just come to you looking for peace, for comfort, 
for answers, God. We are here to connect with you. We are here to dwell in your presence, Lord, as your church, as your bride, God. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all can be seated. Welcome to Sarah Lands United Methodist Church. My name is Laurie Ann. We're very glad that you are here worshiping with us this morning, worshiping our Lord. If you are a visitor today, um, please make sure to stick around so we can say hey to you in the fellowship hall. We would love to meet you, get to know you. Um, if So you should have received a connection card when you came in this morning. Please make sure to fill that out for us. Uh, the ushers will be picking those up shortly. If you are worshiping with us online, hello and welcome. We're very glad that you are listening in. Uh, please make sure to leave a comment so we know that you are with us this morning as well. So we have a couple of announcements this morning. Um, VBS starts tomorrow. Woo! It's so exciting. And it runs through Thursday from 9 a.m. to noon each day. All children entering kindergarten through fifth grade this fall are welcome. If you'd like to pre-register, we have registration cards in the lobby and church office. Contact Betty Moy for more information and volunteer opportunities. Um, Tony, did you have anything that you needed to talk about this morning? What did you have to talk about? Today, I think there's a birthday party for someone. Who? It's his name. Caleb? Caleb? So is it your no birthday? You, but all youth are invited to Caleb's birthday party at Skateland today. Is it four to six? Is that right? What time is it? Five. Five to seven. Five to seven. And then on the 3rd of July, we will not have youth. And on the 10th, we're going Tubin. Nice. That's all I got. All right. Thanks, Tony. So next Sunday, July 3rd, we will have a combined service at 10 a.m., followed by a barbecue lunch from Stoney's at Rambo's Skateland in Saraland. Lunch is free of charge, but please register on the connection cards so we can plan accordingly. Everyone is welcome to join us. We do need a few extra hands to help set up for lunch. If you would like to help, please contact Anna Tesh or the church office. <clears throat> so we're still collecting your feedback. Um, about the three finalists for the name of our church. The three names that we are choosing from are Christ Point Church, Journey Church, and Stillwater Church. We value your feedback. Please use the feedback cards in the lobby or email your feedback to info at sarahlandumc.org. Simply rank your order of preference from one to three with one being your favorite. Please include your name as only one submission per person will be counted. So the Women's Resource Center will be reopening in Saraland at the end of July. Saraland UMC will be joining other churches in stocking their baby boutique. Drop off items that a baby would need from birth to two years of age at Saraland UMC between now and July 17th. I have one more announcement that's not on the slide. Um, so. July 2nd, it's a Saturday, all men are invited to celebrate Josh Birch and the birth of his and Brittany's first baby, Sophia Grace. Um, July 2nd from 2 to 4 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall, there will be food, games, and a diaper raffle. So bring some diapers and you'll get a raffle ticket to win something cool. And um, for admission into the party, you have to dress in your best dad attire. <laughs> July 2nd, 2 to 4 p.m. Jorts and New Balance shoes. <laughs> That's it. And tuck in the polo. Tuck in the polo. <laughs> You'll win. So today, Pastor Mike continues the sermon series, Be Strong, the book of Joshua. During this sermon series, we will soak in God's faithfulness and encouragement by studying the timeless stories recorded in the book of Joshua. Today's theme is Jordan, Watch God Do Amazing Things. <laughs> Thank you all for those announcements. I'm Pastor Mike. Uh, what time does church start next week? 10 o'clock. We have one service. Just want to make sure you caught that. Well, it's, really, it's really great to bring us all together. You may not know a lot of the folks in the other service. They may not know you or maybe just haven't seen them in a long time. But that's, that's fun to do that once or twice a year. So I hope you'll be able to come together at 10 o'clock. And like, uh, like Lorianne said, afterwards at 
Rambo Skate Land, there'll be free lunch. You don't even have to skate. Just come get some lunch. And if you want to skate, there'll be uh, free skating for anybody who wants to. Bring friends, bring uh, your kids, grandkids. So there'll be plenty for everyone. So it's fun to do this. We do something like this every summer just to bring us all together. Now, I wanted to share uh, about something fun that I did this last week. Let me put a picture up on the screen. Uh, we led uh, with Sarah Robbins and I uh, led kids to Blue Lake Camp in Andalusia. And, uh, and also Callie led some children as well to the kids section. But it was a really special time. And for me, um, what was most special about it was that we had three kids recommit their life to Jesus Christ this week. Was, and that's... Above all the playing games and all the great fun that we had, like that's, that's ultimately what we are hoping for, is that people reconnect with their God. And there are a couple kids who really were able to forgive some things in their past or people in their past. There were some tears. There were some nights I stayed up after 11.30 praying with some kids about things. It just really, it was a meaningful full time. So all of you all in the front row, this church loves you, and we're really proud of how you're growing in Christ. So... We, 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 we love our young people at Sarah Land UMC. Well, I wanted to also invite um, Dottie is going to come on up, and we want to share something else exciting that God has done through the ministries of Sarah Land UMC. Good morning, everybody. I want to talk to you about our mission trip to Kentucky the first part of June. Y'all, this was probably the, one of the most amazing trips we have made. Um, there were seven of us. It was Stephanie and the Robbins family there in the back. Um, you know, our usual 12-hour drive. You know, you start at 4.30 and you just deal with it. That was probably the hardest part. Um, building the ramp was so much. I mean, everybody just worked together. It's such a good team. We were learning. We were learning to work together. We got to play with the chop saw. I mean, you know, it was fun. Um, that area up there, this is the first time in two years that we've been able to go back, that I've been able to go back. And I did not realize how much I needed to be up there. The spirit up there is just, it's just refreshing. And I know we are people helping people love and serve Jesus, but it serves me and I, and I and I know the rest of the team are so grateful for all of your support um, financially prayerfully we felt your prayers every day we were due like severe thunderstorms and every day you could stand look at the radar and just see it part and go around us it was amazing the family that we worked for was Mike and Jill Gaylor um, we're family now um, we bonded with them, we, we, we prayed with them, we talked with them. Um, they were an amazing family. And it, it just show, goes to show that the spirit up there, even though people are in need, the spirit is up there, and you come back, you come back changed. So I do want to invite all of y'all, whoever wants to go, I don't care how big a team we take, we'll take everybody that wants to go, First week of June, put it on your calendar, start praying about it, and we'll go back. There are things to do. That you can work in the thrift store. You can work in the office. You don't have to build a, a ramp, although that's one of my favorite things to do. Um, but please, y'all consider it prayerfully. Um, you will change other people's lives, and I think your life will be changed too. Thank you. So we are, as a church uh, people, helping people to love and serve Jesus. That's our mission statement. We are a church that loves and serves Jesus together. We're people helping people. We all jump in together. And I believe, like what Dottie is saying, you jump in and you do something like that when you serve other people, or you serve at camp, or you serve at Vacation Bible School. Um, this is part of our calling as Christians, but it's amazing how we grow personally when we jump in and become the hands and feet of Christ, and we get out there and, and use our gifts and talents to serve Jesus. So as I uh, open us up in prayer today, I want to thank God for our young people who had amazing experience, amazing worship, uh, giving their life to Christ this week for our Kentucky mission trip. But also, I want to pray anointing over our vacation Bible school because tomorrow morning, this room will be rocking. There will be kids running everywhere, but we want our neighborhood, the, the children and the families in this neighborhood, to come to a knowledge of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. That's why we do it. 
And we want to be Christ's hands and feet. Let's open up in prayer today. Lord, we pray, Spirit, come into this room that we might be aware of your power and your presence right here with us today. We come from different places. Some of us maybe didn't want to come here today. Some of us, are, we're not expecting anything. But today, may, may you surprise us with what you teach us, with how we feel your presence, so that you're at work in this room. Spirit, Spirit, come. God, we need you today. We need you because we're going through life Sometimes the feeling that you're not with us or that others are not with us and that we're all alone. God, we need you. We need each other. Lord, we just pray as your spirit teaches us today that we will know why you made it possible for us to gather in this place to worship you today. Lord, we want to thank you the ways you've been at work through the Kentucky mission trip and you blessed some people we never knew before in Kentucky. And that when we serve, that we served pointing to the name of Jesus Christ so that they know why it is that we served and led them closer to you. We want to thank you for each of the 400 or so young people that gathered at camp this last week and for those who said yes to you and for the baptisms that will be taking place as a result of that experience. We thank you for that experience. And we pray an anointing over a vacation Bible school for every single volunteer, for everyone who is helping and every single child who enters into this campus. And we pray that they will be touched with the love of Jesus and that they come to the knowledge and understanding of who you are. We do it all for your glory, God. Each one of us lives our life to your glory. Today, as we come in your presence, be, help us to be mindful of anything in our life that separates us from you. If there's any bitterness, any anger, any unforgiveness, hardening of hearts, anything, God, you've put on our heart, we are not willing to give up. Today, may that be our sacrifice back to you. Receive it. Receive our love today as we praise your name and continue to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Ushers are going to come forward now, and they love your connection cards. Again, if you're a guest, a couple with us today, we're so glad you're here. We'd love a connection card from you, just uh, like everyone, so we can know you're all here with us. It's also a time and part of our worship of giving back, of the gifts that God has given to us. We love to give to God as an act of worship. And online, we invite you too. If you are an online worshiper and this is your church family, we encourage you to give to the work of Sarah Land UMC as people helping people to love and serve Jesus. So another act of worship is singing to God. It's what we do every Sunday. And uh, it's my favorite form of worship. The Bible calls us to worship with song lots and lots of times. And it's just one of many ways we can give back to God. So if you'll please stand. Let's use our voices to worship Jesus. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore. you 
lift your voices. place blessings on our lives and it is the least we can do to return that praise that you deserve that you are worthy of because you are just amazing we love you jesus amen would you please remain standing for today's scripture which comes from joshua chapter 3 verses 9 through 10 and 15 through 17 Joshua said to the Israelites, come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you and that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Pezzarites, the Girgashites, Amorites, and Jebusites. Now the Jordan is, a, is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarthan. While the water flowing down to the Sea of the Araba, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground, while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had, completely, had completed the crossing on dry ground. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. a really cool story of a missionary named David Livingston. And David Livingston uh, became really well known because this Scottish physician said yes to Jesus Christ and went wherever the Lord would have him go. That's a really scary thing when you tell God, I'll do whatever you want, wherever you want. Can you imagine praying that? And he prayed that, and the Lord sent David Livingston to Africa. There's something that David Livingston loved, and that was Jesus. He absolutely loved Jesus. There was something that David Livingston absolutely hated, and that was the African slave trade. And so David Livingston showed up in Africa. He became the first European person ever to walk through the interior of Africa. 
First one ever. First one to see uh, Victoria Falls. The first one to uh, see many of the interior parts of Africa, but also the first one to walk from literally the western coast of Africa all the way across the continent to the eastern coast of Africa. And he's had a lot of adventures along the way, uh, it, it, following his passion and his drive, which was to love Jesus Christ and share Jesus Christ, and to do whatever he could to stop the African slave trade that was uh, ravaging the world, ravaging that continent. And there was about 15 years that he was in service, but for six years of him being a missionary, six whole years, no one heard from him, no one saw him, no one even knew if David Livingston was alive, but yet he was a, a big celebrity among the mission world. And so an American journalist wanted to go hunt him down to see if he still was out there somewhere. So this American journalist went into Africa and was able to somehow track down David Livingston, and he said words that may sound familiar to some of you. He said, Dr. Livingston, I presume? He found Dr. Livingston, and when he sat down with him, he heard all kinds of stories from Dr. Livingston, stories of disaster, disease, of tragedy, all the things he had experienced of years being out there in the mission field and the difficulty. He told one really famous story, uh, if you read the biography of David Livingston, and this was one, one day um, a village came to him and said, we need your help. There is a lion that is attacking our villagers and killing our villagers, and we need your help because, Dr. Livingston, you have a gun. Would you come help us? And Dr. Livingston said, yes, I will. So he went to the village, and sure enough, there was literally a ferocious lion that was attacking people. In fact, the lion lunged at Dr. Livingston, and he was able just in the nick of time to get his gun lifted up, and he shot the lion, but he didn't even slow it down. The thing was so ferocious, and... Uh, uh, eventually, the lion was killed by all the arrows from the villagers, but it left Dr. Livingston the rest of his life with some physical injuries that he carried with him his whole life. Um, and Dr. Livingston served um, in such a way that you can, you can sense as a follower of Jesus Christ that the, the pathway that we're on is not always easy, and it's not always comfortable, and we need to know that as, as Christians. But but sometimes God wants us to be in a hard place because it's going to teach us how to depend on him to get us through that hard place. What were we to say uh, the goal or the destination of Dr. Livingston was? It wasn't to get to a, some physical place. The whole goal of his ministry was relationship with God and with other people. And on his mission, he understood that well. He said these famous words. I love this quote. God, can you imagine you praying this prayer, first of all? Imagine you being in the shoes of praying this actual prayer and meaning it. God, send me anywhere. Wow. Could you, could you actually say that to God? I don't care where you send me, God. Anywhere in the whole world, I'll go, but only I ask that you go with me. That's a pretty cool prayer. Second thing is, God, Lay any burden on me. Could you imagine praying that one? God, send me any tragedy. Send me any conflict. Send me any burden. I'll, I'll do it if you want me to, but I only ask this, that you sustain me. I mean, you're with me through it, okay, God? Got that? We're in this together. And the third thing, I love this too, sever any tie inside of me any ties that keep me to this world, any ties of things that are not you sever those and bind my only binding in my heart to you. Wow, this is, a, this is an immense man of God. This is a man who is washed in the Holy Spirit and God used him in powerful ways. And as we look at our scripture today, one of the things I see in Dr. Livingston is that he cared about a relationship with God, a relationship with other people. And it wasn't just trying to get through something to get to the other side, God had him use all of those tragedies and difficulty in his life for his purpose. This is what I want to say to you today, is that there may be something in your life that you want to just pass. You want it to, to be done. That There's a conflict in your life, and you would just rather be through it. There's a medical situation. Oh, there's so many of those. And you just want to get through it, just to the other side of it. Uh, there's some unforgiveness some brokenness, you just want to get through it. Here's what I want to look at today in the scriptures. 
is what I'm seeing in the scriptures today is a lesson that's like this. God doesn't always just want to get you and me through what we want to get through. But more importantly, God has a lesson to teach you and me as we go through it. In other words, goal in life is not getting somewhere. It's not a destination. Our life is not about a destination, but a journey with God. Now think about it this way. There may be times like you've been on a family vacation like we have, and the goal of a family vacation is to be with family. It's about relationships with your family, but sometimes the getting to the vacation spot can be really hard. I mean, especially if you've got little ones, like we've had little ones, um, and it can be hard to have little ones in the car for a very long time. It just can be unfun at times. But if you get to the destination bedraggled and you're yelling at one another, uh, doesn't that miss the whole point of a family vacation, which is about relationship? It's about the journey together. And you can have experiences all along that bring you closer together. And in our life as well, we can sometimes be so focused in getting accomplished what we need to get accomplished that we forget the people around us. We can step on toes and not realize it because we're just not paying attention to people. We're focused on what we want to get accomplished. And we're also sometimes oblivious to what God's trying to teach us on this journey of life. And we look at the scriptures, we're in the book of Joshua, and I love the book of Joshua. These are classic, classic stories, must-know stories everyone needs to know. But there's lessons in these stories. First week, we looked at what Joshua was called to be as a commander of the people of Israel. Second week, that's last week. We looked at the great story of Rahab and how God called this woman, changed her life to become eventually within the genealogy of Jesus himself. Today we're going to talk about the crossing of the Jordan River and how that happened. And as we look at that, what I sense God saying through this scripture is it's not just getting to the other side of the river. That's not the goal. God wants to journey with us and he has something to teach us as we are transitioning from one place in life to a new place in life. So I want to turn into the scriptures today and look at this first verse, chapter 3. Verse 4 says, you've never been this way before. That was one of my favorite verses in, in the beginning of the book of Joshua because what they're doing here is camped out. This is our river right here, our River Jordan. It's our backdrop for this sermon series. And on the east side of the Jordan River are over a million encamped people of Israel. There's over a million of them in, over here. And they're not fighting forces. These are people that have been wandering through the desert for literally 40 years. There's women and children and elderly and handicapped and people with their pets and their livestock. It's everybody is camped over here. On the west side of the Jordan River is the promised land, what we now call Israel. So if you were in this spot where the people of Israel were standing on this bank, you would be in what's now today the country of Jordan. And if you were to look across the river, you'd see on that bank, that's the country of Israel. God had promised that country of Israel to the people of Israel hundreds of years earlier, and they're just now getting to it. Uh, what had happened is earlier, the book of Exodus is the coming out story. They came out of Egypt. That's what Exodus means. They came out of Egypt. They wandered for 40 years. When they were in wandering, God gave them the law, the Ten Commandments. That's where we get the books of the law. After Exodus, we have Numbers and Leviticus and Deuteronomy. That all comes from the wandering. And now we get to the sixth book of the Bible, which is the book of Joshua. If you wanted to call this book something else, just like Exodus is the coming out of Egypt story, you could call this one the entering in story. It's how they entered into the promised land. And the whole point I think that God's trying to make as they're going into the promised land is when you transition into something new, that you've never experienced before, when you've never been this way, it's not just about getting to where you want to get. It's not about the destination. It's about journeying together with God, not ignoring the people, but being with the people and being with God through the whole pathway to get to where God wants you to go. So as we look at these, this story today that we're going to look at, there's two lessons that they're teaching, God's teaching the people of Israel before they enter into the promised land. So spoiler alert, they do cross the river. We're going to get there. They get over there. And that's a really cool story, but there's a couple things God has for them to keep in mind as they're going. 
The first lesson comes from chapter 3, verse 5. Joshua told the people, first, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. In other words, tomorrow we are going to see how God shows up and we're going to cross into this land and it's not going to be easy because over in this land over here that we're all familiar with, God used to send manna from heaven and he would just feed us and over here we have to get our own food. And over here God protected us as we wandered. Over here we're going to have to fight for our land. Over here we wandered as we wanted to. Here we got to settle down. It's a whole new way of life. But before we enter into this new place in life, the first thing that God wanted them to do is consecrate themselves. Do you know what that word consecrate means? It means to get right with the Lord. Consecrate means to make yourself holy, to purify your heart and your life. I think there's a lesson here in all of this for us. There is sometimes, like we might say, we chomp at the bit to get something done. We just want to get through it to the other side. And if you're going through a really hard time, that's all you can think about sometimes, just get me through to the other side. But think about this. If God just snapped his fingers and you got to the other side without learning and growing and becoming closer to God, being more confident in his ways, then what's the point of just God doing this kind of thing all the time? God has something for us in the journey. If you are going through a hard time, I want you to think possibly as you are waiting for God to do something difficult in your life, number one, is there an opportunity right now for you to begin the process of consecrating your life? Can you even pray this prayer? God, I pray that you would consecrate my life. Make me holy in heart, in mind, in my actions, in my beliefs. One way I like to think of um, seeking holiness in our life is Anything that's in us that doesn't belong there, that God knows doesn't belong, needs to be separated out from our life. And whenever um, the virus scan on my computer starts running, uh, sometimes at the end if it's found a virus in my computer, it will say you know, one or two viruses found and they have been quarantined, meaning they separated out. When we come to God and say, consecrate my life, it's like the Holy Spirit scans us. We're inviting the Holy Spirit to find any way in us that doesn't belong and quarantine it out. Take it out of our life. This isn't because God hates us or he's being mean. It's that he knows when there are things in our life that don't belong that we are in a destructive place he knows what's best for us. He wants us to be clean and holy and pure like Jesus Christ is clean and holy and pure. David said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. I mean, we need to hunger and thirst for righteousness to have pure hearts, clean hands, to want to serve the Lord with our all and not just say, God, you can have a little bit of me, like maybe an occasional Sunday or an occasional I'll read the scripture. No, all of us, or we could look an example like David Livingston. Can we put his quote back up on the screen? Listen to this kind of level of consecration. This kind of prayer is incredible. God, I'm going to hold no place back for you, from you. Send me anywhere, to anyone. And if there's any stubbornness in, him, in me, any selfishness in me that would say, God, you can't send me to anyone or anywhere, I'm going to choose the terms then that's an area of consecration in your life. God, send me anywhere. That, that is freedom to serve Christ without any ties or bounds. That's an incredible thing to pray, and you could pray that. The number two is, though, lay any burden on me. To me, this may be the most challenging one, that we pray honestly, God, whatever tragedy or setback you have for me, bring it. Ah, that's a tough one to pray. But also to say, bring it if you will sustain me through it. I can handle it, God, if your power is with me to get me through this. That's things coming to us from the outside. And the final one is sever any ties inside of me. So you notice one is on the outside, things coming at you. Other, other thing is there may be burdens inside of your heart where you are holding on to something that doesn't need to be there anymore. There's a, there's a tie to someone, to something, to some memory, to some brokenness, and you need to be released by the power of the Holy Spirit, which is available to all believers who say yes to Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God comes in to a believer 
And that's why you sit uncomfortable when you're not walking with the Lord and you're doing something you know you shouldn't do because that spirit of God that's in you, it's like oil and water. The spirit of God wants, wants to quarantine, to eliminate any known sin that's in our life. And the spirit, I think, he's got a lot of work to do in all of us all the time. We pick up uh, sins and pollutants in our life, in our beliefs, our attitudes all the time. We need constant cleansing. Sin always separates. I want to show you this uh, verse from Isaiah. I love, listen to this. Indeed, the arm of the Lord is not too short to save. God can do that for you. He can save you through any trial or any tribulation. His ear is not too dull to hear. But listen to this. When you have iniquities, iniquities is another word for sin. When you have sin, it separates you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so he will not hear. And this is what sin does. Sin always separates. It separates you from the plan of God for that area of your life. It's a separation. And when God places that on your heart, it might be a passing thought. It might be something that you know you're engaging in the moment you're not, that you're not pleased with. It's separating you from your God. That is an invitation to get right with God again to ask for repentance and turn back from the Lord. That's why I think the number one thing that God told the Israelites before they crossed over that river, I think God could have said, I'll bring you right into the land right away. But if they didn't learn this lesson about consecration now, when are they going to learn it? When? Now is a time God wants them to realize the power and strength behind them entering into the land is God and that they need to be aligned, get right with God first. Where are you in your getting right with the Lord? Are you willing to pray a prayer like David Livingston said, I'll go anywhere, like give me any burden, cleanse me from anything within, just be with me through it all, God. Cleanse me of those kinds of things. There was a um, man I knew, a pastor years ago, and he was going through heart troubles, and severe, severe heart troubles, and he was gonna go have surgery, and he was scared, so I don't blame him. This is a big surgery. And there's risks involved in it. And he had gone to church for a very long time, but um, he never really took God seriously before until his heart problem. And it was when he had this heart problem that he realized, oh my goodness, I mean, I can't, I can't heal this heart problem. This is up to the doctors and up to the Lord. I can't heal my physical heart, but I can work on my spiritual heart. And that that trauma of going through that medical issue in his life was like a wake-up call for him. It awakened in him something, not just to get me through this, get, the, get my heart healed, but God used it to teach him he wasn't right with the Lord or that he had a whole nother long pathway that he hadn't yet surrendered everything yet to God. And it was an invitation for him to consecrate himself before the Lord. This is the first lesson I see in crossing into the land of Israel. This is not an unimportant point. The seeking holiness of the Lord is a way of getting into the stream of God's movement of his Holy Spirit in your life. If the Spirit's not moving, I, there can be many explanations for that. But one explanation is there, there can be potentially something in your life where you're not in alignment with the Holy Spirit's will for your life. Then he wants you to jump in and surrender your life to him. That's the, the first lesson. The second lesson that we see before they're entering into the land is this one from verse 8. Here it is. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan's river, go and... What's the next word? Stand. Stand. What's that word? Stand. Stand. When you get to the river, don't do anything. Stand. Now, I don't know what, how you interpret that, but if I am ready with a million people ready to cross into the land, I'm like, get me there. I don't want to go somewhere and stand. What's a lesson, though, God's trying to teach? I believe it's this, that there are times, there are times when God will say, go, do something, get up, because you're being lazy, you're being selfish. I mean, that goes for all of us, right? He's like, get up and go. And then there are other times God will say this to you and me, stand still, don't do a thing. To me, this is a lot harder because there are some of us who like to get things done and we like to get things done now. 
And when we don't see something happening that we want to get done, we take it into our own hands and we're like, I'm not gonna wait on anyone. I'm not gonna wait on God. I'm gonna do this thing. And if sometimes we jump out there before God, we make more of a mess of it. And, and God sometimes wants us to be patient. And I'll tell you, I think patience is really hard to have when you want to get somewhere, when you want to get something done, and God says, wait, stand, and be patient. Because when God does something in your life that you can't do, then you will realize it was God all along. It wasn't you. Stand. There are times that we need to wait on God, and this, I think, is one of the most difficult things. So when when they told Israel to stand, um, and it might have looked like this. Okay, so the, the priests were called to enter into the water carrying the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was this big rectangular box about three feet by five feet wide, and it represented the presence of God. And they're carrying it on these poles, and they're called just to wade into the waters. But what's really unique about the waters at this time of the year, the Scripture told us, is their flood stage. Uh, if you've seen a flooded river, that's, that's kind of dangerous because not only is the water high, but usually a flooded river has debris, it's mud, there's sticks in it. It's, it's dangerous, and you don't know where the bottom is if it's muddy. So here are the priests carrying the Ark of Covenant, and they're called to, to wade in. And I don't know how deep that they went. Flooded river um, could have been up to the waist and just to stand there. And they waited and waited for God to do something. I think that takes a lot of faith to wait on God when you want to get somewhere. And they waited, and I think this is an important lesson for all of us to know that when we're getting somewhere, we want to get somewhere, we need to wait on God because if we don't, if we don't learn to wait on him now, when will we learn to trust in, in him with patience? This, this is just chapter three of this book. There are 24 chapters in this book <laughs> Because you might not know this, but once they get over into the promised land, there might be some people saying, just get me there because when I get there, things are going to be so, so much better. My marriage is going to be perfect or my kids are going to be perfect or my life is going to be perfect once they just get through this. Everything's going to be perfect. But, but in this story, once they get over there, they realize what life is like, like you and I realize that life is like, that once we get through one obstacle, there's another one and another one. They had to fight the Jebusites and the Perizzites and the Hittites and the Amorizites and all the other Zites, right, that we couldn't pronounce in the Scripture reading. It's tough. All the Zites. And, uh, and it was battle after battle after battle. That's like chapter 4 through 24. And if they didn't get this lesson now, then when are they going to get this lesson? Uh, because life is not about a destination. It's the journey with God. It's one destination after another after another. It's the journey with Him. Um, and this is just book 6 out of 66 books. In other words, in your life, you may just be in chapter 3 too, and chapter 4 is next, and 5. You've got to learn to trust in God in every step of the way, it's, uh, and that's one of the more challenging things to do. These are the two things, the lessons that we see. Number one, consecrate yourself. And this may be a prayer that you pray, God, I want to consecrate myself. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. If there's any unclean way in me, I'd reveal that to me so I can be right with you. And number two, once I've done that, stand and wait for God to speak and wait for God to show up and wait for God to do a miracle because God can speak and he speaks through dreams and God can do miracles and God can make a way where you never thought that there was a way possible. And so here were the priests. They'd consecrated themselves. All the people had consecrated themselves and now they were waiting. Let me tell you how the rest of the story goes. So they got into the river and they stood there and then the scripture says, that immediately the water started going down. I can imagine someone saying, hey, look, the water, it's going down. And it was. It started immediately going down. And what they didn't know, but they later discovered, is like 15 miles up the river, there was a blockage somehow. I don't know how it happened, but I know who's the one that made it happen. That God had stopped the river 15 miles up so that slowly the water receded until it literally was gone. It opened up all of the river from this point all the way down to the Dead Sea so that now there was wide open space for the people to cross over. To me, this is one of the cooler Old Testament miracles, but I've discovered a lot of people don't know this one and how the people of Israel literally could cross over the dried Jordan River to the other side. He made a way where there was no way. And God can only do something like that. 
And so they cross the river, and remember, the priests are holding the Ark of the Covenant. And this is how I picture it in my mind, as their people are coming, the, the men and the women, the children, the elderly, the handicapped, the pets, the livestock, everyone's passing by the presence of God. Almost as looking over at the priests standing, they're still holding the Ark. And it reminded them who did all of these things for them. God who brought them out of the wilderness, fed them all of these years, who dried up the, the Jordan River, who is the same God who's going to be them in the, in, with the new adventures in life that were about to await them here shortly. It was God who did this. And never, ever forget it. We can easily forget what God's done for us. I think we have a short memory sometimes. And as there are people that will have memories of something God's done in the past, but right now, if you don't feel God and you don't see God and you don't hear God, it can make you doubt. And that's why when our three young people accepted Christ or rededicated their life to Christ this last week, I said, if you keep a journal, please write that down. Write down your experience, and, and that way you'll remember it so that when you get into another season where you're questioning things and you're doubting things, you'll be able to go back and read and remember that time in your life when God was moving in your life. That will help you, because life is like a, it's like a mountaintop, versus, and then they go into a valley, and then a mountaintop, and then into a valley. And when you're on the mountaintop with God, and you can feel his presence, remember it. Write it down if you need to, because that will help you when you go through the valley times. And this is what God did with the people of Israel. He said, now that this river is dried up, I want you to take... Here we have underneath some stones. And take 12 large stones that are underneath uh, what were now exposed by the river. And I want you to take 12 of them, one for each tribe. Take them out, and I want you to stack them up into like a monument. And I don't know how big these stones were. They're probably way bigger than, than what I have here. And they stacked them up 12 high. And as they did that, they put them over on the bank of the river so that this is the whole point the scripture says that years later when your children who weren't here and to see all of this and when your grandchildren, they see this big pile of stones, they're going to say, grandma or grandpa or mom or dad, like, what's with the big pile of stones that are right there? And you will see and you'll be able to tell them God did this for us, for our people. God did this whole miracle for us just to be able to show us that he's with us in this land, that he's with you and that he's with me. There are times we need to remember too because we easily forget that God has been with us all along. And there are times that we journey off and, and we don't follow the will of God and that's why number one, God wants us to get us this lesson as well. The first thing that we do when we go into a new phase of life, a new challenge, the unexpected, the scary it's the one we can do what we can do and only we can do, and that is to get right with the Lord. First, search our heart, God. Make sure we're right with you because we want to be in the stream of what you're doing. And number two, stand and wait for God to show up. And so I want to pray today this prayer that David Livingston prayed. I want to pray that this would be your prayer. As I pray, may, may you just open up your heart to be able, perhaps even for the first time, to be able to pray with this kind of abandon and this kind of surrender. If there's anything you hold back from God, may, may these words and the Spirit of God resonate with you. And band, as I pray, you're welcome to come up at this time. Let's bow our heads and go to God in prayer. God, I want to thank you for the lesson of your holy word. God, these, we, we know that at times we wander away from what you desire for us. We don't take you as seriously as we ought. And the fact is you love us so much that you would come and send your son Jesus Christ, Christ to die for us, that we, would, we are loved with that kind of great mercy and love that you would send Jesus. And today we pray that we would stand receiving your spirit, receiving this gift of salvation. And God, as we seek to live for you, I know it's tough because we're going through so many difficult times. But I pray that our prayer would not be just, God, get us through this. Get us on the other side. But God, that we would journey together with you. We pray, God, that you would send us anywhere. But just go with us. God, we're willing to accept any burden that you're going to have us to go through. We're willing. We're open. But we pray that you would sustain us. 
and you will. And God, we pray that inside of our hearts that you would sever anything in there that binds us to this world, binds us unhealthy in ways to another person, to another thing, to another brokenness area in our life, something that is unholy, unwholesome. Break it, God, in Jesus' name and bind our hearts to you. Consecrate us, Lord, today as holy people set apart to be your hands and feet in this world because we need your presence and we need your power and the world needs it. Consecrate us, Lord, and allow us to stand in strength and in courage. We love you, God. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray, amen. I thank you so much for joining us today online in worship here at Sarah Lane United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Mike Hoppe, and today we looked at, um, honestly, one of my favorite, most forgotten scriptures in the Old Testament. This is an incredible story of where God stopped the flowing of the River Jordan in order for God's people to cross on dry land into the Promised Land. A lot of people know that story of the drying up of, of the Red Sea where uh, God's people led um, Moses through that dry land into the wilderness. But a lot of people don't know this other bookend of the story of the wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, where after 40 years in order to enter into the Promised Land, God also did another miracle with the water. The whole story of Joshua, and this is something that I find so incredible about the whole story, the main character of Joshua in this book is not Joshua. The, the main character is God, because God is doing so many incredible things things. In fact, one of the things that, that Joshua and God's people are commanded to do over and over is to consecrate themselves, to present themselves before God, and to wait upon God, because it's God that's going to be doing incredible things in their midst. Um, I love that scripture in today's reading uh, where it was stated um, that uh, there's a something that you've never seen before, something you've never experienced before, and that's the case with all of our lives. There's always a new season. There's always something new to experience. There's always a new challenge. And in every new thing that comes into our lives that we've never done before, never experienced before, this is yet another opportunity to consecrate ourselves before God and trust in His path, trust in obedience and following Him, and to wait upon the Lord. See, God will fight for us. He will make a way where there is no way. He is fighting in your life and will make a way where perhaps right now you cannot see. Well, again, thank you for joining us today. And I pray that God blessed you, that there was something about his word that touched you in a new and fresh way today that will give you strength, uh, that will allow you to go forward with God's power, knowing that God's presence is with you into this world. If, uh, if we can help you in any way here, if we can help you connect closer to God, or to a loving church family. I believe everybody needs to walk side by side with other people who love them and care for them. Even if you're always with us online, we can help to connect you. Please reach out to us here at info at God bless you and have a wonderful week.